Hi, I'm Laura Fisher, and I'm the archivist here at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Over the past few years, we've implemented several initiatives to preserve, digitize, and share our archival collection. Our collection includes historical documents, motion picture film, photography, periodicals, and 3D artifacts, all of which make up almost two city blocks worth of material. Today we're going to be focusing on the roots of Peterson Publishing and of course the beginnings of the Peterson Automotive Museum itself. First thing we're going to do is we're going to be putting on our gloves because we're going to be working with a lot of different archival materials and we want to preserve them for as long as possible. You can... So you can't tell the story of Peterson Publishing without first looking back at early automotive publishing. One of the first items we're going to be looking at today is a turn of the century issue of Motor Age. Um, this is a very early periodical. You'll note the black and white illustrations and photography, a lot of text as well. A lot of edgeware um, certainly is showing its age, but being from 1911, I think it's doing pretty good in our archive. Uh, this would have been a very early periodical for early automotive enthusiasts to get information about different kinds of vehicles and also different kinds of travel routes and, and how to tackle these routes as well. So moving just ahead almost a decade later, we have special issues of Motor Magazine in our archive. It is a special issue, so it's going to be a larger format, and this is August 1920. Uh, you'll note we're starting to put a lot more color, get a little more ornate with our covers and our, our publishing. Um, a lot of publishing and illustration trends often reflected other art trends of the time. So this certainly does reflect those trends of the 1920s. Um, we like to open these up sometimes and note the beautiful black and white photography as well. Um, they're starting to get a little bit more complicated in their publishing layouts. So it's really fun to look back at these and see the beginnings of early, other automotive magazines that we're going to look at later. You'll also note that a lot of our archival material today is going to be in archival folders or wrapped in archival tissue. These are not your run-of-the-mill office supplies. These folders are pH neutral, acid free as well. Um, same with the tissue. This is to prevent further deterioration. Paper tends to be very acidic, especially depending on the time period or inks used. Um, so we wanna use materials that are as neutral as possible so that we can preserve them for as long as possible. We'll move ahead a little closer to uh, Peterson Publishing era, era. This is a Motor Magazine issue from 1940. This is just the eve of World War II. Uh, a lot of people may know that just eight years later, Peterson's going to start Hot Rod Magazine in 1948. Again, we have a lot of the colorized covers. We do have a smaller format as well, easier to buy and mail. Also, if you open it up, you'll note that we're starting to get color illustrations inside as well. Of course, the color was limited. It was very expensive to print in color, so you get limited color palette on things like this. Next, it's time to take a look at Peterson Publishing itself. Some of you might recognize a lot of these titles. We have Rods and Customs which eventually became Carcraft. And of course, we have the premier issue of Hot Rod Magazine in 1948. One of my favorite things that we have in our archive is actually an original mock-up of Hot Rod Magazine before the published version that we all know. This was found in one of Peterson's private files. Uh, you'll note the hand-drawn cover, as well as some editing notes. Uh, you can see them planning as to where they would put certain advertisement, credit lines, uh, articles, handwritten notes as well. It's fun to look back and see what they were thinking about putting in the magazine and to look at the actual issue that published. Another fun thing we have is actually a Hot Rod Magazine ad rate. Uh, Peterson was very astute in realizing that automotive advertisers were gonna want to be part of the magazine. So he started creating ad rates based on page size and how often you wanted it to run. There's a lot that goes into creating a magazine from journalists to photographers, editors, and Peterson himself. And so one of the most interesting things that we have in our archive are original story envelopes, or sometimes called work envelopes, um, from nearly every automotive Peterson title. Um, you'll note these are two envelopes, one is from uh, early issue of Honk, and then of course Hot Rod Magazine. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Hot Rod Magazine one for you. 
These envelopes would often contain any information that the writer might need in order to finish the story about a particular event or vehicle. Um, and also, of course, we have photo prints. And then we have notes on where exactly the photo should be placed, how it should be cropped or centered. Um, the fun thing about these is you can actually see the editors working in real time almost of how they would have liked the issue to turn out. So it's always interesting to take a look back and see what didn't quite make it into the actual published issue. One of the largest parts of our archive is actually the Peterson Publishing Photography Archive. In this collection, we have nearly 10 million photo negatives from the Peterson Publishing era. Photographers would often use full rolls of film for an event or a certain car shoot and then return all of the film to Peterson Publishing. All of the film was later looked at and only a few of the images were included in issues as we saw in the story envelopes. The fun part about these is we actually have a lot more photos for each story than were published and therefore we have a lot of photos that we're currently digitizing and putting online. At this time, we currently have 1.5 million of these images digitized and plan on digitizing many more of the significant images in the archive. In addition to Peterson Publishing, Robert Peterson also started many other automotive endeavors. Here we have some original ephemera from the Motorama auto shows in the early days. This is a program from the first annual Motorama in 1950. Motorama was an auto show where all of the latest cars and automotive companies came uh, for the public to view and see what's going on in the industry. We also have one from the second annual Motorama show. I quite like the coloring on this and you start to see a lot of that mid-century design coming through in the program. Finally, we have the eighth annual. We unfortunately don't have a program, but we do have some correspondence and even a coupon for admission. I think it might be expired, though. This is just a small sampling of some of the amazing artifacts we have down in our archive. I want to thank you for joining me today to help me unbox our archive. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.